Hey everybody, this is Darkside. Welcome back to part 59 of Darksiders. Okay, now what we're going to be doing here is really just taking some of the secrets that I found uh, right after I finished my last episode and putting these all in here. I didn't really feel like wasting another several episodes by me running around aimlessly looking for things, so we're just going to put them, all of them, into this one here. Now, the first one is whenever you're traveling, you go to the anvil through the holes. I'm not sure exactly if it matters exactly where you start from. But I start a lot of these things from that central hub over there close to where Samael was. Now, this one, you'll notice, has got some hooks for the abyssal chain. And it's pretty easy to find and get a hold of this one. Be sure you do have your chain equipped and you do have to do some jumping here because falling is just not acceptable as you can see. We do manage to get this one on the second try so that's a plus I suppose. But what this is, is this is a Wrath Shard. And I know there's one more out here, but we'll get to that in a little bit. It's not on this particular path. Okay, off to the Choking Grounds. Now you remember that crazy undead guy that we fought a few times? I think we fought him three times so far. Now, it's time for us to fight him for the last time. Here he is. Now, you notice I had a bit of a button malfunction here and summoned my horse. Worst place I could do that. I really meant to do chaos. We did manage to get it corrected, however, and take him out with relative ease. Pretty sure that's the last time you have to fight him. Now this one here is in the broken stair. This one actually kind of makes me mad whenever I think about it because it was so plainly obvious and just right next to the road that I really should have seen this one coming. All it is is a uh, soldier artifact, but still, plenty of them out there to find. And This one was just right off the path and I had completely skipped over it. Okay, this is going to be the other Wrath Shard location. And it did start from where I was there on the broken stair, and I forget exactly where I headed to. Oh, yeah, the dry road. What would you ask? And that will get you the, the next one. That's also the last of the Wrath Shards out there. Uh, as I recall in game, we did actually pick up one of the health shards but as I recall that's all that's out there because I do manage to finish out the health bar and the wrath bar and get them to full tens each Okay, anyway, so we're moving through this particular area. We're just kind of going through like we were the first time to get to the next land. This time, where we found the first secret, forget exactly what was there, but there was a, an abyssal chain section right above it. And that's to get yet another item. But we didn't have the abyssal chain whenever we went over there that time. So we're about to rectify that. Oh, 
Remember to knock these guys out before you try to get over there or else you're asking for punishment. Now it also helps here if you have some jumping skills and can manage to hit the jump button before you plummet to your death. I don't happen to have that, so we're just running on a wing and a prayer here. Now there's where the chest was. You see our nice little pull up. Swing in. And we get yet another rat shot. Okay, for the next one, we're heading back to the hollow. Okay, the next section of this is going to be in the hollows. And we're going for one of the champion artifacts here. Through this door. Down into the water. And there's a pipe over here where you can swim into it. And it might look like there's nothing there at first, but you can actually swim up from here, and there you will find your artifact. Right, back to the Scalding Gallo. What would you ask of this <laughs> Okay, now going back this way, you're going to find the fan room. And there's definitely more of this place than meets the eye, but they do keep it pretty well hidden. Oh, excuse me, I was wrong, so I'm not going to the fan room just yet. Okay, you remember this where you had to, one of your first experiences, stop in time in order to basically be able to stop it, or take that measure, and then be able to get through the door before it closes. So there are a few portal walls on there. We're going to be taking those in a moment and using them to our advantage to get a fairly powerful weapon. But first you have to take care of the creature. I wasn't going to do this, but they seem to really get in the way. I don't think I've been able to do it without it, so might as well go ahead and just take them out. You notice here that uh, it looks like this guy's hitting on the wall so hard. I think he almost threw me out of the game, or at least out of this particular scene. Anyway, pretty much works as before. You can put this portal down now or later. It really doesn't matter. You've got to come back to it. And now you just do this like you did the first time. Stop time, turn the lever, run under the gate, and then part two will come in. And that's going to be whenever we have to set down our second portal and come back. Okay, see the second portal is up there. 
Now they give you a lever over here that you can just simply turn and run back under. No time needed. I would be slow. Really, you should be able to get under that with no problem. Okay, now we've got our link set up. Now all we have to do is just set up the door. You notice that it's not directly on the other side of the door. What we really need to do is to turn that lever there and wait for the door to rise. This will take our portal up with it to the appropriate place. And you were about to see the treasure chest inside there. There it is. Shoot through. And hello, Death's Blessing. That is pretty much the perfect enchantment to have on your scythe. Alright, back to the Scalding Gallows once more, and this time we're going to head through. And now we're in the family room. Okay, now if you can keep a look down here, you'll actually see the place right underneath one of the, of the walls, or it's underneath the blade, so that's the reason why it's so easy to miss. There it is. Try to do a delayed jump if you can, get your flip. Now, what I didn't do there is there was a chain there, and I had forgotten to actually have my chain equipped. So we're going to wind up doing this over again. But delay your second jump so you can pop back up a little bit, use your chain, and it will pull you right in. One more thing that we can get here, you notice that back there we had the portal wall. Simply set up a portal. Now we have to put the portal down there. Of course, one more to go. Now you may have noticed this particular room before, but weren't able to do too much about it. And it's not completely apparent the first time I came through here exactly what you're supposed to do. But if you look up on the top wall just past that, there is the other portal wall. And all we simply have to do is just place one there and then head back to the room that we had set the first one. And if you remember, they have one of the elevation tools over there. And we can simply use that in our wings to shoot up through that portal and drop us right in. Take your time to get it right. You really need to hit it kind of straight. And once again, yet another Wrath Shard. Okay, this is starting from the gallows once again. Now 
this was one of the first things that I really noticed whenever I was going through this game the first time. Just coming through here and seeing the, the portals on the walls and trying to remember exactly what they did. And I had meant to come back here a little bit sooner. I wound up getting kind of sidetracked in other things. We're going to need the ability to shoot portals. Notice there I took the time to level up all of my weapons. I also did a lot of farming as well. To try to get souls. Which was no easy feat. But time consuming it was... But in the end, it all paid off. Okay, here's portal number one. So we have to set this one down as soon as we take care of this bad. Set the portal down, and then we're going to need to do a little backtrack. We could have done this on the way in, but I didn't actually see it until I started heading back this direction. And see over there you can see it just off in the distance. Now we have to do is head back to our original portal. Jump through and let's claim our prize. Rage container richer. Okay, for the next one, we're heading back to the Black Throne. Now we have to get up a little bit in order to use this one, so all we simply have to do is throw our portals up run around here and progress up like we did before whenever we came through this place the first time to place our two portals here because we're going to need to go up. One there and one at the end of the hall.
Now this one here can be a little tricky to see because you have to shoot the portal out while you're running across this thing, so it's easy to run out of room. So it took me a couple of times to do this. After you get that done though, you can simply go back down like I just did, hop over here and collect your prize. Now this is probably one of the most useful enhancements in the game. I recommend putting it on one of the weapons just for its extra benefits, and that is helping you locate all the other treasures. Now this one in the Outlands, or excuse me, Ashlands, I thought I had got once before, so I actually neglected to go over here and try to get it for a long time until I really started to wonder what I was missing or what I thought I had gotten before and really didn't. And I think depending on exactly where some of the autosaves are can really determine whether or not you actually get to keep something after you get it or not. I definitely remember getting one of the abyssal pieces in the cathedral and wound up having to go back for it after exhausting all other possibilities. Or one artifact richer. There's one more thing that we can get out. Here, this one is a really easy chest to find in the Twilight Cathedral, although it's very easy to miss just because it's it's not right in plain sight and it doesn't really look like there's anything there. Anyway, there are a couple of things in the cathedral itself that we missed. As you can tell there, you can see the treasure on the mini-map, and that's uh, got a lot to do with that item enhancement. I typically keep it on my gloves. You can see the bomb up there, which we actually needed to get something to be able to blow it up before we were able to, before we were going to be able to take that out. Now we happen to have the right tool for the job. Now all we have to do is just get up and work our way around. work our way around this room here and this will take us back up to the area that we're looking to go to. You can see off and just in the distance there was the place that we did the bomb buster on, got it cleared out, so we're able to glide right on over. And collect our prize. Really not much help the Horde Seeker at this particular point since we got the glove. Well, got the book on the glove.
once again in the same room that uh, held my abyssal shard. I thought I remember picking up one yet again, and apparently I'm going back for it right now, so either I wasn't successful or it simply didn't save it that way. So that's where the abyssal shard was. A hop down here at the bottom and then we have a couple of chests. What I'm just a regular soul's chest, but this one's a bit more interesting. A wrath core. Now this is another one here that I could have swore I had gotten while I was over here in the first time, and lo and behold, I'm missing an artifact, so I go around looking through all locations once again just to make sure I didn't miss anything, and there it was, right in my face. Stairs, turn around, and there it she is. As you can tell, there we just got the last of those and got the World Raider achievement. Now, you'll see here in just a moment, as soon as we get up top, that there shows to be one more chest right in this area here. Now, as near as I can tell, this is a glitch. I have not been able to find any chests, nor have I been able to find anybody else that's had a chest there as well, so don't worry about that. Back in Eden, there is one thing that I missed yet again. It seems to be rather common with this place. Now, just off to the left here, you are actually able to jump down and then run up and there's a chest behind this pillar. And yet again, one more Wrath Shard. And that takes our Wrath up to 10, so we are done with Wrath Shards. We had also found all of those, and the, or found all the Life Shards, and they are tied, actually, to a few of the Lifestone Shards, the artifacts are. So once you give those to him, then you'll get a few more life shards out of it. So we're only missing one of those to have a full 10 on them. And back in the Black Tower one last time. To get the very final life shard. Once you get this here, this room is much easier to cross considering you can just throw a portal on the other side and hop right through it. No more running across falling bridges. Of course, these things here are still just as annoying as ever. Okay, from this room, we need to move up one level. Now this upper teleport pad up there is kind of hard to see. I'll just work your way around the room and look up and you'll eventually find it. From there you can just link it to anything, obviously, and hop right on through. Now the shard itself is kind of tricky. 
is once you get up to this point, you can run around here and completely miss this thing. It's, it's difficult to see. But what you need to do is actually look up around these steps and you will see the other end of it. So you can kind of see up there now. Turn around and back up a little bit and voila! Now just hop up to your left here. Collect that prize. And that will conclude this section of Darksiders. Remember, if you like these videos, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, click subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.